Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin İnnel hamde ve şükre lillahi Rabbil Alemin Nehmedullaha tebarek ve teala Ve nesta'inuhu ve nestağfiruhu Ve nümünü bihi ve netevekkelu alihi Nauzu billahi min şururi enfusina Ve min seyyat a'malina Femen yahdihillahu fela mudilla lahu Ve men yudlilhu fela hadiyala أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد قال تعالى في كتابه المبين قل إنني هداني ربي إلى سرات مستقيم دينا قيما من لطي إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومهيايا ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وعنا عول المسلمين قل غير الله أم غير ربا وهو رب كل شيء ولا تكسب كل نفس إلا عليها ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى ثم إلى ربكم مرجعكم فينبيكم بما كنتم فيه تختلفون وهو الذي جعلكم خلائف الأرض ورفع بعدكم فوق بعد درجات ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم إن ربك سريع العقاب وإنه لغفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم. We wanted to share some reflections and some comments on this beautiful passage from the Quran. Clothing, cloth. Closing Surah Al-An'am from verse 161 to 165, the end of the Surah, Surah Al-An'am. This is a very deep and philosophical passage and to offer lessons from it as a result of meditation on the word of Allah in the passage and how it is articulated and what man says in that passage uh, is of great benefit because it contains so many lessons. And no better day to reflect and to meditate and to seek guidance from this passage no better day than Yomul Jum'a Mubarak, especially the last Friday of the month of Ramadan, blessed month of Ramadan. Because Friday is the day of the soul. Friday is it's the day of the soul. You have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, where in the Muslim calendar, all of these days where we are turned outward because of work and responsibilities and the runnings. And on Friday is the day of the spiritual rest where man turns inward, where we take the time to nurture the seed of eternity that Allah has planted inside the soul of every single one of us. The Prophet Wasallam honored Friday. Friday is honored among the days just like the month of Ramadan is honored among the 12th month of the Arabic calendar. In my work, I call this passage the passage of the three G's of the three G's, grace, gratitude, and grandeur. Grace, gratitude, and grandeur. Grace here refers to the divine grace to insan, to each and every one of us. What is grace? The definition of grace is undeserved and unearned kindness. It is a kindness that you have not earned, a kindness that you have not done something to deserve, but that is given to you 
even though none of those two are present. And this passage speaks of the grace of Allah to the grace of Allah to man. Allah who is the Quran calls him Rabbul Arshil Majid Fa'alul Lima Yurid the doer of whatever he wants, the doer of whatever he wills, the doer of whatever he desires. And so this Fa'alul Lima Yurid, this doer of whatever he wills, willed to guide you to the right path and to the right religion and to the right way that he has chosen for him to be worshipped. This is it's with this grace that this passage opens. Qul innani hadani rabbi ila sirati mustaqim. As for me, my Lord has chosen to guide me to the straight path. So the grace refers to the divine grace from Allah that he has given to man. The second G is gratitude. Before the grace of Allah, what is expected of man is to be in a state of gratitude to Allah. But Allah has revealed in the Quran that the gratitude that he accepts is the gratitude that is done through works, the gratitude that is done through actions, not the gratitude that is just expressed by the tongue. This is what he teaches in Surah Saba, Ayah 13, when he says, I'malu ala Dawood shukra. Translate your feeling of gratitude to me into actions, O people of Dawood, O people of Dawood. The third G is grandeur. So how do we express the gratitude that we feel towards Allah? We express it through grandeur. We express it through grandeur. Through the grandeur of being his noble and dignified representatives on earth, we express our gratitude to Allah. Through the grandeur of being his noble and dignified representative, khulafa we express our gratitude to Allah. Through the grandeur of being the noble and the dignified reminders of his presence, reminders of his presence, we are expressing our gratitude to him. So then these are two of the most fundamental, but the deepest and the highest way to express our gratitude to Allah. And that's what makes the passage so powerful to me. By being his noble and dignified Khalif on earth, you express your gratitude to Allah. By being his noble, the noble and the dignified reminder of his presence, you express your gratitude, you express your gratitude to Allah. When man enters into the sacred space of these two realities, that you are his noble and the dignified representative on earth, that you are the noble and the dignified reminder of his presence on earth. When man, meaning insan, enters into the sacred space of these two realities, everything about man changes. Everything changes when you enter into these two spaces. Things that even the Sharia allow you to do, you will not do them, much less things that the Sharia does not allow you to do. And these are some of the essences of this passage. The passage is articulated in the first person innani hadani as for me my lord has guided me in the first person the the insan the human being speaking and expressing and the testifying with the eye man standing alone before allah and committing 
and committing. The passage then starts, قُلْ إِنَّنِي حَدَانِي رَبِّي إِلَى سِرَاتٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ دِينًا قِيَمًا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ As for me, not in me, but as for me with the stress, my Lord has guided me to the straight path. Meaning, I wouldn't have been able to be on that straight path if it was not for the guidance of Allah. I wouldn't have been able to come into Islam if it was not through the grace of Allah because No one can come into this faith except, except through the grace uh, and the izn of Allah. And so it starts with an acknowledgement of the absolute divine grace that Allah has chosen me since no one enters his religion except through his permission, then I feel privileged and I acknowledge the grace of Allah having chosen me and brought me into Islam because I would not have been able to enter it, to be guided towards it were it not for Allah. وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَعْتَدِيَ لَوْ لَا أَنْحَدَانَ اللَّهِ We would never have been able to be guided to it were it not for the guidance of Allah. And so this acknowledgement of the grace of Allah is saying Allah gave you everything. Oh Allah, you gave me everything. Because if Allah guides you on the straight path, Allah has given you everything. Everything that man reaps that is good in this world is a consequence of being on the Sirat al Mustaqim. All the Khairat is a result and the fruits of being on the Sirat al Mustaqim. This is why the beginning of the Quran, Surah Al Fatiha, man stands before Allah. And greets him and praises him and magnifies him. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is greeting him. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is praising him. Ar Rahmanir Rahim, Maliki Omidin, Iyaka Nabudu, Iyaka Nastainu. All of those are magnifying Allah, acknowledging his greatness in relation to our littleness. And then comes the prayer. Man stands before God. He doesn't ask for wealth. He doesn't ask for power. He doesn't ask for fame. He doesn't ask for beauty. But he asks to be just given one grace and one grace alone. And that is to be guided on the straight path. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. This is the first dua of the Quran. The very first supplication in the Quran is for man to be guided to the straight path. How significant. Man is saying, you give me everything and in return I will give you everything. So then, قُلْ إِذْقُلْ إِنَّنِي حَدَانِ رَبِّي إِلَى سِرَاتٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ دِينًا قِيَمًا مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And then, قُلْ إِنَّ سَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَهْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَلُ مُسْلِمِينَ Then, as a result of that, my prayer, in the salati, my prayer will be only for Allah, the Lord of the boundless universes. Here then, my prayer meaning, I will acknowledge the supremacy over me of no one other than Allah. I will bow down to no one other than Allah. I often tell the story when I was at the University of Sorbonne in Paris a long time ago, uh, back in the 80s. And uh, Prince Charles uh, of England came to visit the Sorbonne and visit the competitive religion uh, department. And uh, before he came, there were all of these protocols that were being taught to people because the, there's what is called curtsy, 
like where people bow down when you meet him. So they actually had some people come from there saying, when he comes in, this is how you you you you take a step, you shake his hand, and then you and then you bow. So they're preparing people for him to come. And I was the president of the student Muslim Students Association at the time, and uh, I called the meeting in that evening, and I told them we bow down to no one except Allah. We certainly don't bow down to princes and to kings. We bow, we stand erect and we shake his hand like an or, the ordinary man that he is before us. And on the day, there were, there were different groups of people. There were the French students and there were the students from England. There were the ones from Wales. And everybody was doing the curtsy. Everybody was doing the curtsy. And then we were, the group in the back, he walked us to, to us and walked up to us and all of us stood erect and extended our hands and his comments was he said ah you must be the muslims and just smiled and shook our hands made no comment we shook his hand and made no other comments we bow down to no one except allah this is in the salati lillahi rabbil alamin at the end the supremacy of no one i acknowledge other than allah's and I bow down to no one other than Allah. This is in the Salati. When Nusuki, my sacrifice also will be for no one except for the Lord of the boundless universes. Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. My sacrifice of time, my sacrifice of wealth, my sacrifice of comfort, and if need be, the sacrifice of my life will be for the Lord of the boundless universes alone. In the Salati, wa nusuki, wa mahiyaya lillahi rabbil alameen. Here, a very important point is lost in translation. Most of the translations say, my prayer, my sacrifice, and my life, and my death are for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. But it doesn't say, it's not my life, it's my living my living mahyaya not not my my life hayati not hayati my life but mahyaya my living and there is a very big difference between life and living when he says my life my living will be for allah the lord of the boundless universes it is easy to sacrifice one's life for the sake of Allah. It's one instant to give your life, quote-unquote, for the sake of Allah. What these people are doing, strap a bomb to you and blow it up and kill people, it's easy to do that. It doesn't take any courage to blow yourself up. I, Somebody once was visiting with me and he made the comment, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid of dying. I told him, I believe you. It's living that you are that, that you are afraid of. It's living that frightens you. I believe you. You're not afraid of dying, but you are afraid of living. This is what frightens you. Because to in one instant give your life is easy. It doesn't take any courage whatsoever. But to live day in and day out in the name of Allah and for his sake. To live day in and day out on the Sirat al Mustaqim, or doing your best to be on the Sirat al Mustaqim, to live day in and day out with all of the requirements of being a Muslim, to live day in and day out to protect and to spread and to uplift his religion, that is not easy to do. And yet, this is why it is called a jihad. All of these things that people say in the name of jihad, killing people and blowing yourself up and uh, stabbing people on the streets and, and, and, and shooting people in, in the streets and call that jihad. Like we don't have a definition. We have a definition from the Prophet Sallallahu of who is because this is a hadith that is in the sight of Imam Muslim. Somebody came to the Prophet Sallallahu openly in front of everybody and asked him, one question, Man al-mujahidu fi sabilillahi. Who is the one who is 
truly on the path of jihad for the sake of Allah. What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answer? Man jahada liyakuna kalimatullahi hiya al-uliya huwa al-mujahid fi sabilillah. He said whoever is struggling so that the word of Allah is prevalent and uplifted high that person is in jihad for the sake of Allah man jahad liyakuna kalimatullah hi al-uliya huwa fi sabilillah huwa aw huwa al-mujahid fi sabilillah those that fight to uplift the word of la ilaha illallah those who fight to uplift the word of muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam those who fight and struggle to uplift in the deen and Allah in Islam that these are the true mujahideen fi sabilillah so that when he says my prayer and my sacrifice not my life but my living because this is what is hard my living is going to be for the sake of Allah wa mahya wa mamati and not my death not mighty my death would be mighty but mam wa mamati my dying even the process of my dying i will do it in a manner that is pleasing to him because in islam there is an art of living and there is an art of dying but the art of dying is not spoken much because death for some reason frightens people so we don't want to talk much about the art of dying yet there is an entire phil- philosophy and a spirituality of dying and dying with grace in islam i think for me one of the ultimate examples of is is is ali ibn abu talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when he got stabbed it took him two days some riwayat say three days really it was but two and a half days for him to die when he was stabbed by ibn muljam ibn muljam stabbed him in the masjid but it took him two two and a half days and during those two and a half days during those two days or those three days ali displayed what it means to die with grace the riwayats are moving that every time he was brought food the first thing he would say before he touched the food is did you feed the prisoner did ibn muljam did he eat first he first make sure that he has eaten first and when they come back and tell them yes he has he, he has eaten then at that point he will he will eat he said don't touch don't torture him if i die the law is if you kill without right bi ghayri haqq you will be killed he said kill him in one stroke don't torture him and don't touch anybody in his family he would walk, he say help me up and they would help him up he was being held in the masjid and he would come to him in the masjid and he would check his he was he was bound like they used the rope to tie his hands and his feet and he would check those the ropes to see if they were too tight he said because if it's too tight you are oppressing him and you if you oppress him you're going to an answer to allah on the day of judgment and this is a person who has stabbed him and he knew that he was going to die imagine that that's the art of dying and then the beautiful khutbas recommendations and testaments that he gave to people during those times his legacy testimonies and then advice to imam hasan his son this is the art of dying and this is what this passage is referring to when he says my prayer and the, my sacrifice and the, my living and the my dying will all be for allah 
the Lord of the boundless universes. Qul inna salati wa nuzuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin. La sharika lahu wa bidhalika umirtu. He has no partners in any way and in anything. This is what I have been ordered to do. And I will be the first one of those who have surrendered to him. So here it is commitment to Tawheed. Commitment to pure Tawheed. And then the passage continues. قُلْ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ عَبْغِي رَبًّا وَحُوَ رَبُّ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ ولا تكسب كل نفس إلا عليها ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى ثم إلى ربكم مرجعكم فينبئكم بما كنتم فيه تختلفون سي أغير الله عبقي ربا وهو رب كل شيء سي will I choose another so called God other than Allah although Allah is the Lord of all there is All there is, there is only one Allah. Should I go and choose another God? That alcohol becomes a God? Should I choose drugs to be the God? Should I choose money to be my God? Should I choose power to be my God? There is only one. Every soul will have only what it has earned. And no burdened one shall bear the burden of another. And then you will be returned to your Lord and he will tell you about what you used to differ. The essence of this ayah is man turning his eyes toward the akhirah. Man turning his back to the world and setting his eyes or her eyes on the akhirah. These generations are very different. Like at which point at which point, at which point do you turn your eyes toward the Akhirah? The, the, the, the Salaf of Salihin and even the Salihin among our generations, at a certain point in their lives, they turned away from the world and they turned toward the Akhirah. The, you will see them during those moments when they start to give away their possessions. And they're healthy, they're not ill, they're not traveling. But they started because they are at a place where I want to have less and less of this world, not more and more and more of this world. They start to prepare themselves. I remember, and I tell this story, most people that have heard my lectures have heard it, to where it was routine for me and my father. We bought his his grave and we dug his grave 12 and a half years before he passed away it was routine for us after the salatul juma and after he sits with the people before asr we will walk over to his grave and sit on his grave and dangle our feet and have conversations this is what i mean by preparing yourself for the akhirah for, for them, at which at some point, and that's what this passage is saying, to, at some point, we are 90 years old and we want more and more of this world. We want more life, life. We want more years. We want more of everything at 90 years old. At which point are you going to turn your eyes toward the Akhirah? At which point are we going to? And then, And then, But then, he it is who has made you his khalif on earth. And some of you, he raised them above others. Listen to this passage because it's very important. Your role is to be the representative of Allah on earth. You see, there is a complete misunderstanding. People think what I was talking about earlier, when you turn your eyes toward the Akhirah, it does not take away in any way 
your responsibilities, it actually awakens your responsibilities that you have in this world. Being turning your eyes toward the world, to, to away from the world toward the akhirah, the eyes of the heart, it actually makes you more keen and more present in your responsibility in this world. And this is why these two ayats are next to each other. He made you his representative on earth. And some of you who give, he gave more than others of all things. Some people he gave you more beauty. You he gave you more knowledge. You he gave you more money. You, he gave you more authority. You, he gave you more power. It's general. That some of you, he gave you more money than others. Some of you, he gave you more fame than others. Some of you, he gave you more wealth than money than others. Some of you, he gave you more power than others. Some of you, he gave you more authority than others. But... Whatever Allah has given you more, keep these words in mind. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا أَتَاكُمْ To test you in what I have given you. To test you in what Allah has given you. Allah give you knowledge. More knowledge than the average person. Allah is testing you. What are you going to do with that knowledge? This is of everything. Whatever Allah has given you, the specialization knowledge that Allah has given you, Allah is going to test you. Where is the sadaqah of that? Where is the sadaqah of that? Allah makes you just being handy around the house. You can fix anything. Where is the sadaqah of it? Allah gave you knowledge, what is the sadaqah of it? Allah gave you fame, what is the sadaqah of it? Allah gave you knowledge, what is the sadaqah of it? Everything that Allah has given you, something in abundance, in abundance, be very careful and be very frightened because Allah is, going, is testing you with that. And on the day of judgment, Allah is going to ask you, what was the point of giving you more knowledge? What was the point of giving you more beauty? What was the point of giving you more fame? What was the point of giving you more of anything if you didn't use it in order to lift my word? Lift my word. And for the good of my creation. Turning your eyes toward the Akhirah deepens your awareness of your responsibilities in this world. And then the passage ends in the Rabbaka Sari'ul Iqabi wa innahu la ghafuru rahim. You notice that the passage started with I. Verily me, verily I, Allah has guided me. It starts with I. And it ends with Allah. Allah is Sari'ul Iqab, but He's also He's fierce in punishment, but He is also Ghafur and He is also Rahim. It started with the I and it got lost along the way and it ended with Allah. It starts with Mam Man asserting his Ananiya and ends with that the only Ananiya that is worthy of being called Ananiya is the Ananiya of Allah. The only presence that is worthy to stand and say, I am, is the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man starts and ends by saying, I am nothing, only Allah is. I am nobody, only Allah is. This is how the passage ends. Allahumma ja'anna من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسن والله make us to be among those who listen to the word and they follow the most beautiful parts of this world this world اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت سميع عليم accept 
what we have done for this during this month of Ramadan because you hear and you see all and you have knowledge of all taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tub alayna innaka anta tawwabur rahim the parts of our worship during this month of Ramadan that were not perfect we seek we repent of that and we seek your forgiveness for them tub alayna innaka anta tawwabur rahim accept the good that we have done and forgive us and have mercy on us for the parts that were not perfect allahumma zayyinna bi zinati alquran wa akrimna bi karamati alquran wa sharrifna bi sharafati alquran wa albisna bi khilati alquran fa innaka wali waliyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi ya badi'u samawati wal ard ya fatir samawati wal ard ya alim al ghaybi wa shahadati wa ya qadi al hajati wa ya mujib al da'wati istajib du'ana bi rahmatika ya arhamur rahimin wa salamun ala mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil